Welcome back everyone and welcome to today's class. Today we are going to create our own HTTP server and we are going to make it quite modular in different functions and it will uh, use the fork function in order to be able to receive several uh, connections at the same time. We will also uh, create the new route method of uh, serving web pages. So we will disconnect the con connection between the URL and the file part of it. So this part. Before, uh, this was always connected to a real file or a real directory on that server. But nowadays, especially with the new cloud platforms, we use something called route instead. So we predefine different strings. That's this part of the URL. And then we handle them with, with a, a different function or at least a different part of the code rather than serving a specific uh, file. And if we need to serve a specific file, we usually do that dynamically instead. Okay, I will create a directory for this server and I will just call it httpd. The d at the end means uh, daemon and a daemon is a, another name for a server software. So it's quite common that different types of services like FTPD and HTTPD and SMTPD, that different types of services ends in a D in the software. Okay, so let's begin by creating a file. I will just check my Vim config real quick. I remember where I put it. Here it is. I will just copy this command so that my tab works the way I want them to. Uh, and we'll create a file called httpd.c. And I will just do a simple header and I want to, let's do this. I will do head dash 15 and steal the includes from our last server project. Oops. I didn't want them inside of my comment. There we are. Okay, so the includes are done. I will also define a <coughs> I will define a static I will define a static uh, listening address of zero 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 so we're basically listening on all interfaces when you create this code I recommend that you bind it to localhost if you if you don't have a firewall that might be helping you out because if you tie it to this IP address everyone on the internet will be able to access it and perhaps that's what you want, but you should at least be aware of that. Okay, so we'll begin in our main, and this will be very slim. I usually try to make my code that way, so that the main function is as tiny as possible, and everything is uh, done by functions. However, if we need a socket file descriptor, 
but I won't initialize the socket directly here. I will just do uh, a call to a init function. Let's call it server init like this. And we will just, we won't give it any argument at all. Okay, let's begin there. So we'll create that function. I will make it an int because the socket file descriptor that will be returning is an int. And in here we will do as, as much as possible. Uh, I can't, we can do this by the way. Let's put the port number in there. So I will still, no. Let's do it like this. Sorry for changing a bit to and fro, but, but uh, I want this to be perfect. So let's make the int function able to receive arguments like this. And we will create a char for the port number. Then we'll check if arguments is less than two, and if so, oh, should be if here, nothing else. And if arguments are less than two, that means that we're just starting the program like this with no arguments. So we will give an error message saying usage percent s and the listening port something like this and the argument will be argv0 which is the name of the executable and then we'll return minus well and else we'll just set the port to argv1, like this. <clears throat> now we can send the port as a string to the, um, no, not as a string. We will use the a to i in order to convert it to an int. And then we can use it in our function. So in here we will just have like a port number like this. And we will have an S here as well, which will be re the return, val return value. <coughs> and we'll initialize the socket. So AF INET SOC STREAM and a zero. if s is less than one i believe let's double check that part i never seem to remember the return values on error minus one is returned okay so let's do like this and then we will just return our own Zero. It's always a good uh, procedure to put a uh, comment on top of your function describing how the uh, return value works. <coughs> so returns zero on error else. or it returns a socket fd. Okay, so socket is done. We'll also need a struct 
stock address in for the uh, for the server like this we don't need the client in this function I believe we'll see okay so the socket is done now we're gonna do the bind after we prepare our uh, socket uh, struct so sin family is af inet serve I'm not uh, uh, describing every part of the uh, uh, the server structure stru stru uh, address in structure because uh, if you want details about that you can uh, watch uh, the video about uh, a sample TCP server I will just uh, discuss it briefly and I will uh, uh, go deep on all uh, new things in this video and stuff. So sin address source address. No, there should be a dot there. Sin address source address equals inet address, and then our constant listen address like this and serve sin port equals acon s and the port number okay now we will bind the socket file descriptor together with the uh, structure Soc address and we will put in the serve and size of serve like this and let's check the return value of bind as well on success zero on arrow minus one okay so if this has a positive value like this then we will close the socket and we want to return zero maybe we should have a global variable for the error messages we could do that we'll just call it error I don't I'm not sure if that's available but we'll see okay so here we will set the error to socket error and in this case we will set the error to bind error then we can use that in our, our main function or other functions to just print out what went wrong okay because this is a global variable and it's pointing to this and this is a um, a constant uh, static text which is saved in a special part of the memory it's called the BSS and that is available from all functions so the error vari variable is a global variable so it's uh, available everywhere and that is this message as well <coughs> just a little informational parentheses okay so when we have bound them together we will uh, listen for the connections so we'll just give the s and the number of simultaneously or awaiting 
connections and let's do five and let's check the return value of listen zero on success minus one on error okay so if this returns a truthy value we will close the sock we will set the error to listen error and we'll return a zero so this was socket bind and listen now we'll just return our s this uh, structure is local to this function but I don't think we're going to need it anymore so that should be okay okay so now we have initialized the uh, let me just do a couple of these temporarily so I don't have to write at the bottom of the screen okay so now we have initialized the S and let's see if it's false then then we want to print to standard error the message contained in the error variable and we want to return minus one and exit the program and if not then we are up and running the only thing we have left before we can accept the connection is the accept uh, function but I will handle that in a loop so we'll do a never ending while loop and we want to let's see we want to get a socket file descriptor for this part as well so c equals serve no client accept and we will just send our s that ought to be enough like this So we we'll loop through this one and we will there. Maybe we should add a couple of messages as well. So something like this. Listening on percent s and percent c and that will be listen address and our port and then we'll loop through this one because this is a blocking call it's going to wait for a connection and then hand it over to us and when we get a connection then we want to check if it's negative if it fails somehow and if so, we want to print out an error messages, an error message, std error, and the message, 
but we're not gonna quit we will just go to the next round of the loop so continue like this and if it does work however <coughs> then we will print out a message incoming connection maybe we can add more to it later on uh, but for now that's okay so incoming connection and then we want to fork we talked a little bit about fork uh, the other lesson a couple of days ago and fork does creates a copy of your program so it runs in two instances from here on and forward and we get a return value from fork which is one of the following for the main process return the new processes id for the new process return zero so that's how fork works which means what we want to do is if we are the main process we will just move on to the next round to the next uh, round uh, cycle in the loop and do the next client accept but if we are the new process then we want to handle the connection so if fork is zero which means this code is for the new process then we want to do client handle connection no not handle everything handles something client connection let's do it like this and the only thing we need to say to that is the server's uh, ID and the client's ID, the socket file descriptor. That ought to be enough. And we don't need a return value or anything. And else we'll just continue, but we don't need to specify that. Okay, I think this should be enough. It will never come to this point, so it will return error if it does. Okay, so now we will... So in the next step, we want to do the client accept function. And we'll put this on top of this. So let's do the return value like we did before. So returns zero on, on error or returns the new client socket file descriptor is enough and what did we call this we called it we called it client oh, I don't remember client accept okay client accept and we will have the socket file descriptor as a argument as the only argument yes Okay, what do we need here then? We need a client file descriptor and we need a, um, an int for the size. It's a soc len t, I believe. Address size. No, it should be called address length. That's more specific uh, 
Uh, okay, and we also need a struct sock address in for the um, for the client like this. And I want to memset that structure with zeros size of client. Okay, so what do we do? What do we need to do here then? We need to run the accept um, function. And accept takes three arguments. The first is the so servers, socket file descriptor. The second is the structure. So this, this part is zero at the moment, but after accept has succeeded, this one will be filled with a client port and IP address and so forth. <coughs> and that is also why we need to specify this, this third argument, which is the address of this address length variable. So I will just set that to zero and then this will contain the size of this. Right, so we do the accept and we will put the return value inside of our client socket file descriptor like this. And I believe it returns minus one if it fails, but let's, let's check that. So, accept. And we have, on success, returns the file descriptor on error minus one. So, if C is less than zero, then we'll do just like we did before. We will set the error to accept error. Maybe we should, no, let's do it like this. And we'll return zero. And if not, we will just return C. That ought to be enough, I think. So to recap a little bit, we read the listening port from the uh, command line, put it in the port, we execute our serve init function with the port as an argument, and this one will just do the socket initialization, fill the server struct uh, socket address, and then we'll bind them together. That is the socket file descriptor and the structure. We'll do the listen as well. And if any of those returns with a failure, we will put set the error pointer towards different error messages and return zero. And if everything goes fine, we will return S, our socket file descriptor. And then we will initialize the loop where we, where we will loop client accept. That's also a function. And this one will just accept the connection using the accept uh, function and return the new client 
file descriptor. And if it returns zero, it prints the error. If not, and continues to the next um, cycle of the loop. And if it works, then it will fork. And the new instance of the program will run client connect, sending both file descriptors. And the main program will just go to the next run of the loop. Okay, that's quite a lot of quite advanced code. So we'll see if it uh, compiles. We probably have to tweak it a little bit. This client con function isn't done yet, but I will just put in a dummy function for now. So void client connection int s int c return like this. Let's see what happens. Okay, we got an error. Sock address undeclared. Sock address undeclared. Ah, it should be struct sock address. I did the same mistake several times when we did the other server uh, video as well. I see. I seem to be very used to using typecast for every struct, but they don't. So let's see. Sock address will include the struct sock address. And what about the client? This time, I remembered correctly. All right. Let's compile again, and now it works. Awesome. So let's see what it does. It says that we should supply a listening port. All right, let's do that. AD. Let's do 8282. Okay. That shouldn't be a V there. Let's see why that happened. Ah. Should be a D there instead. All right, let's do it again. Okay, I'm not sure that's better. <laughs> Very long port number that is. Okay, so port port equals argv one. What is ah? Okay, port is a char. We convert it into a uh, into an int here, but we don't save that. So let's just do percent s here. Okay, this time it listens to eighty two eighty two. Let's just do a net stat so we can see that it is true. Yes. Here it is. Good. We won't be able to send or receive any data because we haven't done these functions yet, but we should at least be able to connect to it. And let's see what happens. 82, 82. Okay, we're connected. Incoming connection. We can do a PS and see if it forked. Here is one instance, here is one instance. And we can also see that this has one process ID. And this has another. So everything is behaving the way we want it to. And I think 
that would be good enough for today. Because we are, I'm going to do a series with this um, uh, HTTP server. So today, today we made the uh, the base of the application, and uh, next time we are going to do something more. We're going to handle the client connection, uh, take care of different uh, head HTTP headers and commands. And we're gonna uh, take care of the routes and serving web pages. Thanks for watching, and thanks for today.